Rochester, we are so excited to be here today. Uh, we are grateful to our governor for coming here to make this exciting announcement. Let's give him another round of applause. I want to acknowledge a few of our special guests that we have here. We have Senator Joe Robach, Senator Rich Funky, County Executive Cheryl Donoffo, who's a great partner, City Council President Loretta Scott, and also a great partner, former Lieutenant Governor Bob Duffy, uh, and head of the chamber, uh, Empire State Development President Howard Zimsky, uh, Finger Lakes Regional Economic Development Co-Chair Danny Wegman, and Co-Chair Dr. Ann Kress. Hillside Worth Scholarship Connection President Augie Melendez, United Way Greater Rochester CEO Fran Weisberg, Rochester Monroe Anti-Poverty Initiative Director Leonard Brock, Catholic Family Center CEO Marlene Bissett, and Community Place of Greater Rochester CEO Rod Cox Cooper. Let's give them all a round of applause. Today is a very special day in Rochester because uh, the chamber told me that they have an apartment downtown for Governor Cuomo for his birthday, <laughs> which is next week. So we want to uh, tell him happy birthday in advance. Uh, Bob Duffy let out the secret, Governor, so we want you to know that we wish you a very happy birthday. But today is an exciting day in Rochester for a very important reason. As you all know, we've been working very, very hard in this community to fight poverty. Uh, this issue was raised to uh, the top of the level uh, when the Community Foundation did a report and they found out that Rochester continues to increase uh, when it comes down to childhood poverty and families that are living in poverty. That message went to uh, the state of New York all the way up to our governor and he responded. And I want to tell him from the bottom of my heart Thank you for caring about the citizens of Rochester. Thank you for all that you do for us. We've been working very, very hard here um, trying to achieve the governor's challenge to this community of tackling poverty. And the one thing that he said to us is that we have to work together to do it. Under the leadership of Dr. Leonard Brock, uh, we have been able to come together as a community with our Finger Lake Regional Economic Development co-chairs to really tackle this issue. Uh, he's not here today, but I also want to acknowledge our majority leader, Joe Morelli. Um, let's give him a round of applause as well. Uh, because he has been very, very supportive to this effort and us tackling poverty here in Rochester. Um, working for Assemblyman David Gantt many, many, uh, a couple years ago, um, and for many years, for 14 years, I saw firsthand the poverty uh, that uh, impacts our community um, when people have lost hope. Growing up here, uh, and my grandparents living on Jefferson Avenue, I saw the challenges. Um, and I am so happy that finally, as a community, we are coming together to work on behalf of our citizens, the most vulnerable among us, to change their lives. To say that we as a community will do everything possible to give them the support that they need to improve their lives. And that, I can tell you frankly, would not have been possible without the people in this room, but most of all, without our governor, Governor Cuomo. So thank you again, Governor. Now I would like to introduce a great friend to the city of Rochester who is fighting for us in the New York State Senate every day, who has a new look, I like it, Senator Joe Robach. <laughs> Well, I was gonna shave this three-day growth off, but if you like it, Mayor Warren, I'm keeping it on. <laughs> uh, I am honored and delighted to be here to uh, welcome the governor, and I would just echo very briefly a little bit uh, on behalf of Senator Funk and, and myself. Um, you know, when we made this Finger Lakes Regional Economic Development Plan, this was a big year winning that money. 
but the governor's vision and everybody working together to make sure we not only had strategic investments in creating jobs, but we had a component to make sure that everybody in this community uh, at least had a chance or a pathway to better their lives as well, or people that for some degree felt maybe they were being left out. Um, that was a wonderful mission, and today is really about the culmination. We can't let the cat out of the bag yet. That's for the big dog, Governor Cuomo. Um, but these programs that you're gonna hear about today are really touching on mentoring, pathways, real programs that work on transforming people's lives, really. That's the word, transforming uh, and making sure that everybody is gonna be able to have a chance to take care of what we want to be a great renaissance here in Rochester. And we're off to a good start. Um, if you've been paying attention and notice, um, one of the projects that we worked on at Genesee Brewery has already announced that 64 of the 120 jobs uh, are gonna be people from a little bit of a non-traditional hiring process and helping some of those people transform. Um, the county executive, in the spirit, we're taking some people directly off welfare. We're gonna get call center jobs, middle class jobs. Uh, and you're gonna hear more and more about this as the governor and others make their announcement today. But that's what it's all about. And I wanna say, um, I've been in government for a while now, but these really are important days. These aren't just announcements. These are when you hear the announcement about resources being used, plans being announced. This is the policy, the investment, and the real plan, the substance that you're gonna to hear today that are gonna impact not only individuals' lives, which is the most important part, but I think globally really put a different face on our community. So uh, I certainly wanna thank the governor for his leadership, um, our co-chairs of the Regional Council, Ann and Danny, and really all my colleagues in government. Uh, I, I say it time and time again, I don't know a lot, but I see other places where when people don't work together, the result is very different than what we're having here in our community. And it's good to know that that collaborative effort ultimately is gonna change lives and families here in Rochester. So, uh, Governor, again, thank you. We welcome you on behalf of everyone. And it is now uh, my privilege to introduce uh, Danny Wegman, who has done from the beginning on the Finger Lakes Regional Economic Development Council, uh, really been a, a pillar in getting us to where we are. Wouldn't have been able to do it without him. And um, he's really done a wonderful job. And a lot of the things that you're gonna hear announced today are initiatives that he's not only supported as the chairman, but also individually. So please give him a big round of applause. Danny Wagner. Thank you, Joe. And good afternoon. Six years ago, the governor challenged us to form regions, 10 regions across the state, and shape our own future. He gave us that challenge, and it was a welcome responsibility. He really got us all to believe that we could make a difference in the state. Two years ago, he said, if you really want to make a difference, you're going to be able to compete for half a billion dollars. Now, what you have to do is set priorities and have be united behind these priorities. That's what you have to do. Then he said, if you want to really win that money, you have to do an outstanding job on poverty, helping people get out of poverty. At that point, we established our MAPI, the Rochester Monroe Anti-Poverty Initiative. And the challenge we had there is how do we take a group of different people, different backgrounds, and set priorities and have total consensus behind them? Not easy, but what we found from that group and from the community was that the number one initiative that they wanted done was adult mentoring, that there would be a person that would help a family get out of poverty, starting with people, not with systems, people. And they, we agreed to do that. We also 
picked up two other initiatives, that Hillside Work Scholarship Connection, which I just understand this year in Rochester graduated nearly 90% of the kids in Hillside this year. That takes a while to get the numbers, but that's what it is. Yeah. And Monroe Community College uh, Forward Center at Eastman Business Park has been selected. There was another one, too, that we'll get to later. And the point is that not only did the council uh, vote on these unanimously, but we have community support as well. And that's what the governor has challenged us to do. We call this one community plan. I think for years, we've been blessed with magnanimous people in this community. The problem is we've tried to do too many things and they weren't connected and they weren't scalable. And we're all doing our own thing. So what we've really done is taken a page from the governor's book on these priorities and this consensus. And that's what we're really trying to do here in Rochester today. So I really appreciate every one of you who voted for these things, and I hope that the rest of you understand what a significant co commitment that was to this group. And you heard most of their names uh, a little earlier, and, and they're the ones who voted for this, and it's making a huge difference for us. Now, we didn't just ask the state for money. We said, what can the private sector do? So we got a group together, mostly Bob Duffy. Bob, thank you and we've raised nearly $3 million so far from the private sector that's going into a fund, a prosperity fund. I, where's Fran? Is Fran here? Okay, run by the United Way. Thank you, Fran. And that's going to be the basis, and we have to grow it more because, I won't say how much, but the governor might help us with that if, if we raise a lot of money. So <laughs> this is what we have to do, but that's the way it should be. It should be the private sector working in connection with the public sector to really get behind programs, show that we're committed to them, and then we can scale them. So again, I, I've been working on poverty. I began at the United Way over 40 years ago. And I've seen a lot of things go on. I've never seen commitment to poverty from the state before today. And it's all due to one man and thank the Lord, he's our governor, Andrew Call. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Well, it is really my pleasure to be back, and I don't just mean that as words. Rochester is an inspiration and what you're doing and what you're accomplishing and what your goals are really is uh, inspiring. And it's my pleasure to be part of it. First to Danny Wegman, who is, as you know, he's an extraordinary human being. He just, he, he really is. His, his character, his values uh, make him a, an extraordinary person in everything he does. He's such an asset to the community. Uh, he's brilliant, uh, he's innovative, and he's about helping other people, always. And uh, the initiative that we're talking about today does not happen without uh, Danny Wegman. It takes everything he knew and learned and felt from Hillside and all his experience, and it just brings it to a new level. Danny Wegman, thank you very much for what you do. To our Mayor, lovely Warren, always a pleasure to be with you, Mayor. You're doing a great job. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Ann Kress, who you'll hear from in a moment, who's the co-chair of the REDC. Pleasure to be with you, Ann. <laughs> My old friend, and uh, we were talking about you in the plane. I still miss you, Bob. Bob Duffy. And we have Rich Funky and Joe Roback, uh, my colleagues from Albany. Pleasure to be with both of you. I can't help commenting on Joe Roback now with that new goatee. It's just asking for it. Let me give you a quick Joe, one quick Joe Roback story. Joe 
and myself and Bob, we would be in Albany. We'd have a lot of fun together. Uh, and we'd tease one another. And Joe would always tell stories about how uh, he was a big motorcycle guy. He was a big motorcycle guy, rode a Harley. And he was always telling us stories. I rode the Dakotas. I rode over here. I rode over here. For months, he's telling all these stories. I, oh, yeah, I put on my leathers, man, and I go. <laughs> wind in my hair, except I have no hair, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I just go, and I, because I need freedom. I'm about freedom. And my motorcycle, and me and my boys, my boys, I go with my boys. Ah. We do a ride across the state of New York, motorcycle ride for breast cancer awareness. And uh, I call up Joe. I said, Joe, we're doing a motorcycle ride across the state, and we'll meet you in Rochester, and why don't you come with us from Rochester to Buffalo? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm there. Motorcycle, leathers, I got my boys walking. <laughs> we get to Rochester, and there is a light drizzle going on. I mean, like a mist. It wasn't even a drizzle. It was less than a, less than a drizzle, like a heavy mist, maybe. There was a dampness on the ground. And we get to the event, and Joe's there with his motorcycle, and he's got this little concern. I said, what happened? He says, you know, it's, it's raining out. I said, it's not rainy. It's a little more than a drizzle. It's a mist. It may be a heavy mist, but it's just a mist. Oh, he says, you know, it gets very slippery when it's wet out. I said, well, it's not wet. It's damp. Well, it's very slippery. And, uh, you know, my bike will get wet. I said, well, yeah, when you're driving to the Dakotas, what happens? It's always a sunny day when you're driving. So I don't like to get my bike wet. I said, Joe, don't start. We're going to ride to Buffalo. It's easy. We'll go slow. We get on the bikes. He's right next to me. We go just out of camera range, OK? <laughs> Maybe a quarter of a mile. I look to my left. I see Joe getting off at the first exit ramp, gone. <laughs> Big, tough guy with the goatee, Joe Roback. But I will tell you this in truth about Joe Roback, and I really don't like to say good things about him. The, uh, I often lament, uh, as you've heard, that the state of New York did not do enough for upstate New York. And for many years, the legislature was myopically focused on downstate New York, and upstate New York was left to its own. And I also uh, lament that the upstate representatives often don't do their job and advocate enough for their district because all the leadership is from downstate New York. And too many of them are just go along, get along kind of guys. And they don't really fight for their uh, community, whether it's Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, et cetera. And uh, look, the upstate New York got the short end of the stick for 20 years, maybe more. Uh, and you didn't hear a whole lot of complaints coming out of upstate New York. One of the things uh, we've talked about is organizing those upstate assemblymen and senators so maybe we put their voices together and we have a louder voice. But uh, an exception to that rule, a person who is not there just because he wants the title and he's not a go-along, get-along guy, but he's a guy who fights for Rochester, uh, that is Joe Roback. And I'll tell you, you don't have two better advocates, uh, two better people who fight for Rochester Monroe than Joe Roback and Bob Duffy. And those two guys are the guys who I would want on my side. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Today is exciting because you're doing two very, two different things that actually complement each other. Uh, first, we talk about economic development, economic development, economic development. Why? Because you need the jobs. Everything leads to the job. If you don't have the job, you can't go into a high school and offer a young person a vision about hope and opportunity if they don't see the job that is at the end of the rainbow. If you don't have the jobs growing, the mayor doesn't have the tax revenue to do her work. So getting the jobs back. Uh, the challenge of upstate New York is really the challenge of America. You hear it more and more now on a national level. We lost our manufacturing jobs. Uh, what do we do now? We lost the manufacturing jobs through no fault of our own. 
but you had globalization, other countries, uh, had corporations move, and technology, which for all its goodness, reduced uh, millions of jobs, where you at one time had five, six, seven people doing something, now you have one robot going back and forth doing the same job. Uh, so our future is then in advanced manufacturing, and it's highly competitive, and businesses often need a partner to work with to succeed in that highly competitive uh, advanced manufacturing job, and the state is more than willing to be that investment partner uh, for economic opportunities. We're doing it all across the state. This morning, I was in uh, Hornell, where the uh, Alstom Company, which builds rail cars, just won a $2.5 billion federal contract to build the Acela cars. Now, they came to us, Alstrom, and said, look, we can't compete. This is an international competition. We have Chinese companies, European companies. Everybody's competing for this contract. Uh, we can't compete unless we have a bigger facility, unless we have a new training facility for our workers because our workers would need to advance their skills because this is the next generation high-speed rail train. Uh, and it's all computers and electronics and you really have to know what uh, you're talking about to work on it. And the state invested $30 million in a total $80 million revamp of Alstrom. And Alstrom won the $2.5 billion contract. 2.5 that's about a billion dollars of economic activity in that region. All the subcontractors, all the spinoff of that money. Uh, Rochester, we're doing it in all sorts of locations, photonics, et cetera. But it's a two-step process. You have to get the business, you have to win the contract, and then you have to have the employees who are trained to do it. And almost every new job requires a new level of training. I mean, I walked through these plants, I couldn't do any of the jobs, right? They're all highly technical. They all involve some kind of computer electronic device. So really, it's almost that you have to be trained for those positions. Uh, photonics industry that we're, we're growing here, you have to be trained for those positions. It doesn't come naturally. It's not enough to say, I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna get up early, I'm gonna learn. You have to have the training. And one feeds the other. When you have the trained workforce, you get the companies. And when you get the companies, you get the trained workforce. But the training is an ongoing process. And Alstrom is now going through that on the new training for the new cars. Photonics, we have to train the workers to bring in these industries. And that is now a lifelong process. It's not like the old days. I graduated, I took my tests, I'm done. No, no. As your business is advancing, your skills have to advance along with it. So you have to have the retraining facilities, and that's exactly what we have here, are continually retraining for adults, high school students, workers, all along the spectrum, because it is a lifelong process, training the workers for the future. And that's part of what we're doing today. The more appealing part of what we're doing today to me, beyond the economics and the training, which is smart, is it's training for people who are economically disadvantaged. Why? Because what Rochester is saying, what the state of New York is saying, is yes, we want to work very hard and we want to bring in jobs and we want to bring in businesses. And we want to get the unemployment rate down. And it is way down. And I'm very proud of that. I'm prouder of the fact that it's down all across the state of New York. It's not like the old days. It's down in New York City, but it's up in upstate New York. It's down all across upstate New York. That makes me happy. Happy. You know what's going to make me happier? When we can say it's down for rich people, middle-income people, and for poor people, because we can say as a city, we can say as a state, the greatest success is shared success. That is the New York model. That is the New York credo. 
Yeah, we want to do well. But how do you define doing well? A few number of people do very well, or we have shared benefits. And that opportunity is hitting all people everywhere. Now, I spent most of my life working on poverty initiatives. I started in my 20s doing low-income housing, homeless housing, et cetera. I was HUD secretary for eight years. I worked in every poor community all across the country. It is hard for a person in poverty to compete. Everyone says, well, it's America. You can compete. You just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and you go, and you learn, and you go to college, and you baloney. There are so many obstacles that a person who's coming from a disadvantaged location, disadvantaged family, has to meet, has to overcome to be competitive. And you need help, and you need training, and you need a mentor, and you need assistance along the way. Nobody uses the P word anymore, poverty. We don't even talk about it as a people. Why? We've almost given up. Well, there's nothing we can do. Baloney, there's nothing we can do. We never lost the war on poverty. We never started and committed ourselves to the war on poverty. We know. <laughs> we know that if you provide the right support services for that child, that child can grow up to be anything he or she wants to be. But you have to provide those support services. And it starts young, and it's about school, and it's about after school, and it's about mentoring, and it has to follow that child all the way up. And until you can say, we have gone into the poorest communities in Rochester, and we've turned them around, until you can say that, you cannot say that we have finished our job, and you cannot say we are a success. It's not enough to come to the Eastman, Eastman Business Park and say, look, it's 100% occupied. Nice. But tell me how inclusive that success is, because that is truly the definition of success. And when I say Rochester is an inspiration, because you get it, you believe it, it is your moral code, it's who you are, it is the spiritual character of Rochester. And it is just inspiring to see it, and it is inspiring to see how Rochester has come together, all these different agencies, all these different players, one table, put aside your own agenda, come up with one cooperative plan and one cooperative strategy. And that's what you've done. And today takes it to a new level. $30 million in mentoring assistance close to 3,000 people to be retrained, 16 million from the state of New York, the rest from private resources, uh, inspired by Danny Wegman. Congratulations to you, and thank you for what you're doing, and thank you for letting me be part of it. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Governor Cuomo. I'm recognizing that I'm standing here um, behind a sign that talks about the future of Rochester. And we owe that future to your belief in what we can do, to the belief of our community and what we can do. And so can we please give him another round of applause for that? As the governor said, this is truly a very, very big day for the city of Rochester, and we will continue to connect our region's res residents with more economic opportunities and good paying jobs. The Finger Lakes Regional Economic Development Council has long focused its work on building cradle to career pathways that create economic opportunities for individuals that close their skill gaps and also encourage industry growth. 
growth. Our council is committed not only to building these pathways, but also to reducing poverty and inequality and building equity and inclusion across our entire region. We want to do this in a way that works for Rochester, and that is exactly what we have done today thanks to an incredible belief in what we're doing from the state and from the governor. The initiatives that the governor outlined from the new adult mentoring program that is the heart and soul of what the Rochester Monroe Anti-Poverty Initiative has focused on to the amazing success that occurs every single day in the Hillside Work Scholarship Connection to MCC's own new high-tech demand-driven Finger Lakes Workforce Development Center, what we like to call the Forward Center. You may see where we got that idea up here. Um, they mark a comprehensive effort to find pathways to prosperity for the full diversity of our community. These interlocking initiatives assure that individuals are connected to evidence-based efforts that build brighter and better and stronger futures. And as a state and national leader in workforce development, MCC is so eager to expand these opportunities at the Forward Center through connections with other educational institutions, K-12, community-based organizations, and certainly industry pro partners in our region. By focusing on programs and services that address poverty at its roots and equipping hardworking residents in this area with the skills that they need to succeed in business and industry, and to build tomorrow's workforce today. Together, we're truly putting together the puzzle pieces so that we can build a stronger community. My co-chair, Danny Wegman, and I are proud to continue this work, this progress, with the Regional Economic Development Council. We appreciate the investment from the state. We appreciate the belief of Governor Cuomo. And of course, we appreciate our hardworking Finger Lakes delegation, the incredible elected officials in our region, including County Executive Donolfo and Mayor Warren, everyone who has a seat at the council table and puts the needs of our collective residents in front of all of their individual agendas. Thank you so much for your dedication and helping to move the Finger Lakes forward. We are thrilled to be working with all of you in continuing this work, which is only just beginning. Thank you very much.